On BBC One, a little later than scheduled, it's Film 94 with Barry Norman. This, our last regular programme of the series, we have the return of Leslie Nielsen in Naked Gun 33 and a third. We talk to Robert Rietti, the man of a thousand voices, and we look at some of the movies coming your way in the summer. And so to Robert Rietti, the man of a thousand voices. Well, quite a lot of voices anyway. What he does is he replaces the voices of other actors in films. Pay attention and you'll see what I mean. Any objection to raise the limit? 500 pounds, shall we say? Too big for me. Count me out, too. Perhaps you'd like to take the shoe. My friend won't mind. Mr. Bond. Ah, yes. Mr. Bond. One of my associates spoke about you. Well, that was the face of Adolfo Cerley in Thunderball, but the voice was not his. That was my voice on him throughout the whole film. And, in fact, it was necessary because Adolfo Celli at that time spoke with a very heavy Italian accent, but so thick that it was almost like a Neapolitan speaking with an A at the end of every word. So it was necessary to dub him. And as a result of that, when people didn't realize that that was not his voice, he achieved many international films and I had a job for life. You wish to put the evil eye on me, huh? We have a way to deal with that where I come from. Sometimes a director will be happy with the physical performance on the screen of an actor, but not like his voice, in which case one has a great deal of license in changing everything. But on other occasions, if the person's well known on the screen, one doesn't want to change his voice, so then one must serve him and really take the best from what he does, enhance where necessary, but not change the characteristics of that person. There's never a man yet look me between the eyes and live to see a good day afterwards, Tommy. Sometimes directors get carried away with themselves and think, all right, Robert can do this role, and while we're at it, maybe he'll do that one. And it reaches an exaggerated state where, in, for example, Waterloo, I ended up doing 98 different voices. voices. 98 voices. different voices. Sometimes one is asked not to redo a voice entirely, but to slot in a section because there's been a change of dialogue and maybe the actor isn't free to come over and do it. And then it's tough because one's got to enter his characterization, not change it, but merely redo the new words necessary in, as far as possible, his voice. A typical example is Christopher Plummer in Royal Hunt of the Sun. He played Atahualpa, the Aztec chief and he chose to use very strange demi-semitones. It was a brilliant performance, but the Americans couldn't understand him. So I was called in to redo his three most important scenes in the film, and the film emerged with sections of me and sections of him, and as far as I know, nobody realized that it wasn't he. All those years, how talked you nothing but wickedness. When Jack Hawkins lost his voice through throat cancer, the profession was very faithful to him and he went on acting. He was offered quite substantial roles, but the difficulty was what to do about his voice. So then they called me in to get as close as possible to his voice and redo everything. As long as he mimed a sentence, and merely, merely used his lips without any sound at all, he could sustain a whole line. But sometimes directors would say, Jack, give us some words now which we'll get rid of later, but at least it'll help with the editing. But in order to do that, he had to gulp air, swallow, and then burp it from the stomach. And in that burp, formulate two or three words. But he couldn't sustain more than that before closing his lips and going through this action again. And of course it meant that after every three or four words, there was this movement of the shoulders and closing his lips, sometimes at not a logical moment. 
then it was very tough to try and disguise that or add little sounds to link words. Remember, you are princesses. If I hear of any misbehavior, I should be very angry. We'll be good. <laughs> You're all so big now. On one occasion, they invited Jack into the studio to see me doing it, and it was nerve-wracking for me. And when I'd finished, they said, well, Jack, what do you think? And very charmingly, he said, well, I'm speechless. At the moment, I'm dubbing a Czech film. The film was shot in the Czech language. Brocade, Your Highness. Shiny buttons and lace and mother of pearl. Now then, careful, careful with that. That's it. Oh, anything wrong, Monsieur Plafon? Oh, just some pages in the way. All right, now. OK, cut, Andy, and play back if you would. Sometimes in the profession, they jokingly say, oh, Robert of a thousand voices, but they never say Robert of a thousand faces. And sometimes I even forget I've got a face myself. Never mind, Robert. Now everyone knows what you look like. As an addendum to that, in Hercules Returns, which opens next month, a cinema books a movie with an Italian soundtrack and no subtitles. So, guess what? Yes, the cinema owners decide to dub the voices on the spot. Sounds like a job for Robert Rietti.